and welcome to the Rangers News YouTube channel. My name is Cameron Willis and today we are going to be discussing the Dave King Club 1872 share purchase. Um, last week, I think it was, or yeah, a few days ago, anyway, the Dave, Dave King Club 1872 came out and announced plans for them to buy his um, shareholding. He's currently the largest shareholder at Rangers. If Club 1872 can complete the purchase, they will go on to be the largest shareholders at the club. Um, the I think it's around about thirteen million pound. It's been reported is how much it will cost. They're looking for twenty thousand supporters uh, to become legacy members, which could be which they can become as part of a one-off donation or over a period of months. Uh, if they manage to complete the purchase within a year, uh, I think Dave King says he'll sell his shares at twenty pence a share and make a loss somewhere close to three million pounds. Um, but it can take up to three years. The entire thing's kind of it's 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 had mixed response from Rangers fans. Um, I think a lot of that is down to a kind of confusion or a lack of clarity and the surprise of this. I think it came out of the blue really quickly. I don't know if it's something that David Dave King kind of greased the wheels on and, and, and Club eighteen seventy two were reactive to, but it came out very quickly. Um. I think people are still trying to make sense of it. I think to the credit, Club 1872 are out a lot, doing a lot of interviews. So has Dave King been trying to provide clarity on where they stand with it. Um, initially, what's your kind of initial views on it, James? Uh, it's a really weird one for me. Um, I don't want to write the fence here, but I'm very much writing the fence on it because... I can see lots of positives and kind of the way I, the way that it's been kind of put across by Club 1872 and kind of a lot of the more kind of informed fans or the kind of shareholders and whatnot. There are a lot of positives for it. The problem for me is that sometimes that I do have certain misgivings about not so much Club 1872, but at times Rangers fans couldn't agree in the colour of shite. And being the largest individual shareholder in the club, just it's, there's something nagging that it may not be the best overall moving Rangers into. And the fact that raising £13 million is it's a lot of money. I'll, we've seen that kind of fan ownership vehicles aren't always the best received for Rangers fans. The club mm -hmm. kind of had a groundswell of support at one point, but you know, they've never they've never carried it through since kind of what twenty fourteen was it. It's kind of faded away and kind of died off a little bit. So I'm worried. I'd be worried that should they somehow get, I think it would come to just over twenty five percent overall shareholding. But once you reach that point, does interest wane over time and it becomes kind of just a small group of fans that are kind of controlling this or? or I think there's more questions than there are answers just now. I think I think that's a good, that's a good point. I think a lot of it requires more clarity. I think there's perhaps an over reliance on the part of them to say, it, it, no matter how you get to the end of it, the bottom line is it's a good thing, full stop, and that that everything else is just kind of details. Um, I think the details are important. I think supporters are asking the right questions. That I mean, appreh apprehensive maybe for lack of a better word. I think the, the, there are issues such as, is Club 1872 a big enough organisation to handle that that big a shareholding? Is a, I mean, the fact that it came out so quickly, for me personally as a supporter who's considering investing in it, I mean, I I think I'd rather see a prospectus of, of, how, of how, they, how they plan to grow, what they plan to do with it, how, how you would feel involved in it. Um, I think it just need, it just requires a greater sense of clarity. But like to, let's say to the credit, they're, they're going about it the right way. But one of the big things as well is they're pushing for the kind of representative on the board. I listened to the interesting interview with, with Dave King before Lads Had a Dream and, and Chris Jack at the Glasgow Times. That's really, really interesting. They, where they said that they, there'd be issues there with confidentiality. So it would need to be an individual who's, who's separate from Club 1872. So... I mean, that's one of the primary focuses. So there are there are things to be ironed out. For for me, I'm the same as you. I'm on the fence. I think that it, it's something that 
I would be encouraged by for the simple fact of you've you've got an influence for fans. You couldn't have something like a Mike Ashley again. You couldn't you couldn't sign retail deals which which would essentially hamstring the club. It wouldn't be self-serving for, for, for an individual's commercial interests. It would ensure that there's always like a kind of influence at that level. And obviously the, the term that's being coined by them is never again. But I, I do think it's realistic that the, the, to, to A, get this amount of money and then B, operate at an elite level football club um, with, with without that kind of investor-driven um, shareholding. Yeah, I mean, without having, and the, the, the greatest respect to Dave King and any other investor we've had, we've never really had like a, a, an out-and-out sugar daddy type investor. You know, there's, it's always been, like, you look at somebody like Chelsea, who, I think the last time we looked, they were £1.4 billion in debt to Roman Abramovich alone. You know, we've never had somebody that's, that's got us that enthralled to them where, you know, we're owning them the GDP, a small African country. But I just, I worry that if we, we're, we're in Scottish football, we're not exactly a kind of land of milk and honey. TV money up here, buttons. You know, it's like, I think we get a couple of million pounds per season. TV money, we get much the same again in SBFL prize money. We're no making up team riches, so if we want to compete at any sort of level, like beyond the Scottish Premiership, like we're going to need to have investors that, that can sometimes pony up when we need them. And I don't know if Club 1872 is necessarily going to be in that position. But the see, see what you say there, though, for me, that mean that makes this more attractive. The fact that we have uh, we there's only so much money coming in through Scottish Premiership television rights, anything like that, and everything's kind of centered around Europe and then generating assets, selling them on for for high profit. That that's the business model. It's precarious. Do you know what I mean? So so if you were to have an individual like a sugar daddy or something come in and invest X amount into Rangers and spend all their money and top quality players to get us to compete and then one day just pull the plug. There's nothing in the background in terms of the, the place where we play football in Scotland or in terms of financial investment that's ever going to likely be able to compete with that. So that sugar daddy model can be top heavy. Do you get do you get what Oh, you know, I, absolutely. So, absolutely. I, think it's, I think it's like tempering expectations from a Rangers point of view. It's just having that fan influence I, ensures that we can't, it couldn't go in that direction. Yeah, no, I think it's more just kind of trying to find the balance between the two. So, like, like can you look at where Rangers are now and it's a fairly large spread of investors who are covering the shortfalls. It's, it's King, it's uh, the Parks, it's uh, Julian Hohart, it's the fella in Hong Kong, it's the guy that's got the QTS tires, like nine or ten different investors that have all got kind of loans in some form. And I just think kind of when you're then when they almost have to bow the knee to because we haven't won twenty five percent of the shares, they'll essentially have a veto. So if you then have it looking at any potential investors that then have to ensure that you know, they're dancing to someone who might not necessarily be putting in like huge amounts of funds moving forward because that's something else that's, that's very unclear in terms of Club 1872. What happens next? Once you've got these shares, where, what, what happens? Is there going to be contribution, contributions from, from members that will continue to provide working capital for the club? Is there going to be kind of money raised to cover the, the upkeep and the maintenance of Ibrox and Ock and Howie, and they've always spoke about kind of these grand projects of what to do. Edmiston House, you know, these type of things. If we're going to continue to do these things going forward, we're going to regenerate the, the footprint of Ibrox, the surrounding area of the stadium, the training ground. We need to make sure that we have something in place that we can properly fund these. And at least just a plan as to how like Club 1872 and 10, 20,000 supporters are looking at mm -hmm. raise this. So once these 20,000 fans have bought the 25% of the club, what's the next step? Because it's, 
this isn't an end goal, or it shouldn't be an end goal. This should just be a step among a lot more steps. But so far, like nobody's kind of put out much in terms of what those next steps are going to be. So without that detail, I'd be kind of reticent to part with the money as yet. See, I, I think I think that's it. I think it just all seems as if it's just happened so quickly. I think okay, fact yeah. back it's stuck a little bit. A lot, lot of folks are speaking about it as well as you're saying that there's going to be a mar- increased marketing budget, there's going to be an increased advertising budget, there's going to be roles that are representative of the, 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 the proposed uh, like increased scale of the operation. But logistically, I think there's things to be ironed out. I think, like I, said, like I said earlier, I think at the very essence, there's maybe a little bit of an over-reliance on this is a good thing over the piece, but you have to convince people to uh, hang their money. And I, I, I mean, I, I do. I think, I think that for a club up where Rangers play, uh, I mean, end could happen. For example, two or three years time or four years time or whatever, we lose Stephen Gerrard, and then we have like not not a fall from grace, but a re- another rebuilding period. We're in, uh, we're not we're not as effective in Europe. We're not, we're not winning the title, we're not doing this. And this will have a financial knock-on effect that might make us less attractive to investors, but we're never going to be less attractive to, less attractive to supporters. So just having that kind of influence, I personally believe, is, and I'm coming around to the idea that it's a good thing, but for me personally, I need more information. I need, I need, I need a clearer vision. I need a clearer a direction where this is going to take and, and, and not the the carrot of 2012 to kind of be used to, 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 to lead me down it. I, I want to know what, what's the plan here. Like, where, where are we going similarly to you to get that information? I think the timing's obviously opportunistic because of what's happening on the pitch. And, and they're saying, like, it's a good feeling now. Let's try and get this ramped up. And maybe, and, and look, look there's, there's no time like the present. You, you need to get ideas and concepts out there and you can spend too long in the planning stages with them and stuff. But I think as this goes on, Dave King's reiterated as well that, that he, he'll wait for as long as necessary to complete this purchase because he believes that it's a good thing. Um, he believes oh, that... Well, he's making 30 million quid out of it. See, he's he, I mean, he's getting money back. That's a, that's, a, that's another thing. I, I I look at it like he's obviously wanting to recoup his investment. He fronted the money though. Without without the money, there. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's been one of the complaints that people have had, and it's one of the, like the thing about the money's not going into the club in terms of the actual share purchase. Which yeah, I can completely understand, but at the same time, it's always kind of the nature of these, these things, and that you know sometimes there is going to need to be. Like the money's been into the club ultimately, and that it's been into the club and King has purchased the shares and done whatever else and soft loans and all that jazz. But I, once it's kind of now, he's getting kind of at least a share of his money back. Then it's, it's not everything's going to go directly to Rangers. But again, it goes back to the kind of the previous point about what the next plan is and what the what club 1872's plan to get money into the club would be. I think uh, he, he said, I would, from the outside looking in to it, it looks like he wants to eventually completely distance himself, get rid of the shares. I don't know if I still have like a minimal shareholding in, in, the, in, the, in the club or whatever. He wants to completely get rid of it. But for me, it looks like he's on the way out. He, he's, got, he's got his eye on the exit door. I think he's patient enough and that he says he's going to go three years and then potentially rise into five or whatever. But, I think no matter what, he's going to sell his shares. It looks, it looks, it looks like that. So, uh, I mean, is, is this guy who 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 spent so much of his time, uh, uh, money, and resources, much more than what he ever expected to, um, and was the face of of a club in turmoil? Is he just going to hand it over to somebody that that, that he doesn't think's got the best interest of the club at heart? I mean, I doubt that. But there's going to come a time when he says, "I've got to look after. I've, I've done everything that I can." And the time's obviously here because he he wants to sell the shares to Club 1872, but you sell them on somewhere else. I think what they say about it being the, the kind of once in a lifetime opportunity, or whatever. I think that's relevant. I don't think there's going to come a time again when Rangers fans can do this. But I, I think it's been sprung on us very very quickly. And we, we yeah, need- the timing isn't great. Uh, that must be said. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're what, three weeks out for Christmas. And admittedly, it's, it's a kind of longer planned thing, but mm. 
you will see that, and I'm sure it's going to be probably backed up the club 1872's numbers. The biggest initial spike in interest will get will have come immediately after the announcement. Mm. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe there would have been a little bit. I think I think something like a thousand or something like that was a number I seen quoted. I don't I don't yeah. know if that's, that's risen. I mean that's that's a twentieth of the way there, and over the course of three years, I, I think and get compiling all the information in one place, presenting it in a way which fans can understand. Get getting them in on the vision, making sure that they know who the main personalities behind this is, making sure they know how they're going to be involved. Um, and obviously, you can't expect to be involved in like a major league. It, it's a membership organisation, so you want to have your voice heard, and you want to know that you that, that you you have an input if you're parting with your money. So, having all, I mean, they will have this information, I'm sure, on their websites and stuff. But we need we, we need to dilute it into a way and put it into like a prospectus. That that's that was what my view would be on it. If they can compile all that information into a major report and, and detail their vision and their actual predictions about how it's going to go I think I'd be, I'd be more willing to dive in but at the minute I'm reserving myself just to see how things pan out what, what about yourself? No, I've, now that I was having a look over some of the stuff kind of over the weekend and see what was what with it and I, I very well might if they can come out and convince me either argument and kind of where they want to go with it and where they want to take the club kind of beyond you know the usual puff nonsense of you know, we won titles and I want to like an actual proper detailed idea of kind of how they're going to grow Rangers beyond what the club were before, you know, the, the badness of 2012. How they're going to help kind of become a, a global brand and build on these partnerships with the likes of Bengaluru and Orange County SC and the Australian mob that we've partnered up with the name completely slipped my mind. Um, you know, rather than just kind of using them as uh, these small things, how the club's going to really properly build on that. I, mean, I, th- I think that might be something a little bit different because that's like a, a unified club vision, which is all to do with like the, the board and stuff. But, I mean, I what, that, the, what their role in those kind of decisions would be? It would, it would very much have to, they'd very much have to have them because I mean, it's 25% shareholders of the club, then you know, they would need to have a voice. They can't just be there and Either be a nodding dog or just not have a voice at all because, you know, it's, it defeats the whole point of kind of fan ownership and fan involvement. But I must, be, I need to be honest, like I'm never, I'm not a huge advocate of fan ownership. Uh, I think it sounds great in principle. Mm-hmm. Like it always sounds great that, you know, we all, we all own the football club and whatever else. But I always think it's, it's almost a bit too romanticised. I mean, I, I don't, I, I honestly don't know enough about it. I will, I will be honest and say that. I don't know enough instances of examples where it's worked. I don't know enough instances of examples where it's failed. I think that... The big uh, one that's that always pointed to is like Germany. Is Germany yeah. and Spain's kind of the big one that point to. I mean, this would be nothing like either of those. You know, in Germany, the fans own, I think with the exception of maybe two or three clubs, they own half of the club through some kind of, some vehicle or another. Now, this would only be a little over 25 percent, but also it raises the one wee thing as well in terms of once you've got 25 percent, do you look to grow that 25 percent? Because there are only a few, like 29.9 percent, they become obliged to make an offer for the full shareholding. Mm-hmm. But does it become a thing where they stop buying shares for a, a prescribed period of time? And there's far too many questions. Uh, it's interesting. I, I, I was certainly not going to be the last time that we hear about it. I think it's the oh. new fresh. We, 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 they've also, uh, ex, uh, they're also going to do a Q and A for us. We're just waiting on here in the back, and they've been very, very busy. So that will be on the Rangers News website, um, in the coming days. Yeah, let us know what your thoughts are on it in the comment section below. Like and subscribe to the video if you listen, if you like listening to us nattering on about it. And we'll be back this week with more, yet more content on the Rangers News YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.